Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is April 29th, 1938, and the title is Trainwreck Plot. Hope you enjoy. Horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. have been handed down from generation to generation concerning the stirring deeds of the mysterious masked rider of justice. Only Tonto, his faithful Indian companion, knew his identity. And now the thrilling frontier days of the western United States come to life once more. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We are meeting Tonto in the town of Broken Bow! Hi, old Silver! The town of Broken Bow grew up around the railroad station and the telegraph office. Frequently, a train pulled into a siding and stopped there overnight to wait for the train to pass in the opposite direction. On these occasions, the crew of the train would spend the night in Broken Bow's hotel. In the first scene of our Lone Ranger drama, we see Mike Murphy in the cafe, surrounded by a group of men. Mike is the engineer of the westbound train that has stopped for the night in Broken Bow. I'll be blasted if an Irishman ain't got the worst look of man or beast. What's bothering you, Mike? Ask Sam. He can tell you. <laughs> I ain't just sure, but something tells me Mike was sort of planning on seeing Betty tonight. But, Mike, ain't you pulling out with your train? You're handling a throttle on the westbound outfit, ain't you? Now, you should go west when the eastbound is coming this way. Is that what's holding you here? You know as well as I do it is. Now, wouldn't it be a fine thing if I was to meet the eastbound on that single track of ours? I was forgetting that. It ain't that Mike gives a darn whether he stays over or not. That is, he don't care as a usual thing. But he's got an idea Betty should have been here to help him pass the time. Sure, and that's what I think. As a matter of fact, Mike, when she left town to visit her friend, she didn't have no thought that you'd be in town tonight. I'll be talking it over with her. By the way, Mike, you ain't heard talk of Snake Lawford and his gang... Being around this country, have you? Ain't heard a word. Snake Lofgren? I don't know. One of my deputies had an idea. He'd seen one of that bunch of coyotes the other day. But maybe he's mistaken. He wasn't real sure. Well, here's hoping he didn't. It'd be a black day for us if he was to show up with that pack of hoodlums of his'n. Oh, probably just talk. Forget about it. How about filling up our glasses just once more? I feel like having another. Snake Lofgren never comes into a town these days unless he has a good reason, Tonto. In here, no. And there must be a reason. He's wanted by too many lawmen to risk being seen in town unless he has some pretty important plans. Mm, that's right. Is he still back at the cafe? Uh, him still there. Other feller with him. Probably waiting to speak to someone inside. Uh, but he doesn't dare be seen. That's right. I'd like to capture Snake and turn him over to the law right here in town. Why? Why not do it? We can do that any time. 
Let's wait and see what he's planning here. Oh, Susanna! There come Fuller. The engineer of that train on the siding. Mm. Good night, gents. Thanks for a dark, swell evening. Oh, the there he goes, probably to a hotel. Uh, look, there. Snake. Him follow other fellow. Very well. We'll follow Snake and see what happens. I'll be ready to act if Snake tries any violence. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me, for I'm off to Louisiana with the washbowl on me knee. Hey, you. What's the matter? I want to speak with you, mister. Well, speak up. You better step back here in the trees. If you got anything to be saying to Mike Murphy, speak up. I can hear you from here. I say step back. Out. So it's a gun you're jabbing in me ribs. Back where I told you. All right, if that's how you feel about it. But sure, if this is a stick-up, you got me at the wrong time. I'm flat broke. Shut up and get back. I aim to talk with you. You got him, huh, Snake? Yeah, I got him. <laughs> so it's Snake, they call you. Well, it's a name that suits your way of acting. Now, what is it you want of me? Anyone around, Mears? I don't think so. Ain't seen no one. Good. Well, speak your piece. You're the critter that handles that choo-choo train, ain't you? I'm the engineer, if that's what you mean. You know what I mean. All right, Snake Face, I know. You're waiting here for the train to come from the west, ain't you? What's it to you? Ain't you? Go easy with the way you poke me with that gun. Yes, I am. It ain't but a single track, and I can't take my train west from here to the eastbound come through in the morning. Oh, yes, you can. Like fun, I can. If your train's on the tracks heading west, the eastbound will pile right into it, ain't that so? Any fool knows that. That'd be a wreck. That's just what we aim to have happen. Of all the out-and-out out nerve I ever seen, now, I... where did you hear the rest, mister? I don't need to hear no more. Show the... Well, listen, listen, stop chatting me. We're going to make a deal with you, see? There ain't money enough in the world to make me do what it. What about you... Betty Calkin? Keep her name off your dirty tongue. How'd you like to see her killed? What? Thought that'd get you interested. What do you know about her? We know she's the daughter of the guy that runs the telegraph. And we know you looked for her when you come to town and found she's gone to spend the night with friends in Grantsville. Well, she ain't there, see? Where's she at? What have you crooks done with her? There ain't but one way for you to find out. I don't believe you. We can prove what we said all right enough. You got about six hours before you decide. Six hours? It ain't but midnight. The eastbound ain't due till nine in the morning. Yeah. Only your train's got to be a good ways west of here when the two of them meet. You savvy? Three hours to the west? That'll take us out in the desert. That's right. And that's just where we want it to be. You see, we got this thing worked out and planned real careful. Betty Calkins never got to Grantsville. And her friend there didn't know she was coming, so the girl ain't even missed yet. Why, you... Never I... mind the fancy talk. You just come along with us while you're making up your mind. Where's the girl now? You don't need to know that. How do I know you got her? We'll give you proof of that. Get along. Where, where are you taking me? You'll find out. It's up to you, Mike. You can drive that train out as we tell you and save the girl you want to marry, or else. Now get moving. You're traveling with us tonight. Quick, oh, stop that thing in me, Mr. Oh, oh, Cut it out. Quick, Tonto, back to our horses. Maybe better me follow them, huh? Yes, follow them, Tonto. Find out where they go. Then go to Calkin's home and wait there for me. You talk to Calkin? Yes, I'm going to try and learn if those men really have the girl. Them tell railroad teller. Them got proof. Find out what that proof is. There's no use trying to capture those men now. If they have the girl, they'd certainly kill her. Not right. If she's in their camp, you'll find it out. Meet me later at the Calkins home. Yep, and get all the information you can get. Come on, Silver. While Tonto followed Snake Lofgren and his companion, Mears, the Lone Ranger rode to the small cottage where Jim Calkins lived with his daughter, Betty. There he brought Silver to a halt. There was no light inside, but a rap on the door brought a quick response. Have you come back, Betty? No, Calkins. I want to speak to you about your daughter. Open the door. Who are you? A friend. Open this door. Just a second now. I'll have it open in a jiffy. There. Now, what's the matter? What do you want here at this hour of the night? Where is your daughter? She's here. I don't know you. And I don't see why I should tell you where Betty is. you got a heap of nerve coming here. I'll to... step inside. Now, you see here. Listen to me, Hawkins, and try to keep your head. 
When did your daughter leave to visit friends at Grantsville? Around noontime. Why? How did she travel? On her horse. Did those friends expect her? No. And you don't know whether or not she got there safely? No. Is there something wrong? Dawkins, I'm afraid there is. Tell me. You're the telegraph operator on that line. Why would anyone want to stop the train that's coming from the west tomorrow morning? What about the train? That's what I'm asking you. Suppose you light a lamp so we can see each other. Yeah, sure thing. I got a lamp right here handy. Now, just a minute. I'll get it going. There's something mighty queer afoot, and I aim to find out what it is. If something has happened to Betty... There. Now, sit down. Your mask! What's this mean? Who are you? I told you I was a friend. Right now, I'm afraid you'll have to be ready to hear some unpleasant news. What's happened to Betty? Tell me. Tell me what's happened. I'm quite sure she's safe and unharmed so far. But I think she might be in danger of her life. What? Unless we can do something between now and daybreak. Tell me what you know about her. First, tell me what there is of value on the eastbound train. I, I can't tell. I can't tell no one. Someone already knows. How? I don't know how, but Lofkin and his gang have captured your daughter. They're holding her so they can force Mike Murphy to stop the engine west. Before the eastbound train comes by. But that'd mean a wreck. It would. And Betty, where is she at? What have they done with her? Tell me what's on board that train. Gold. A fortune in gold. It's bullion going east from the Gold Coast. And that's why those killers want the trains to crash. Now, what about Betty? Corkin, keep your wits about you. You've got to keep as calm as possible. The life of your daughter may depend upon your clear thinking. But something has got to be done. We can't just sit here. I've Wait. got to... If Betty hasn't been harmed so far, she'll be safe until morning. I have a friend who will come here soon, and he may have a lot more to tell us. Meanwhile, you can tell me who might have known that Betty planned to ride to Grantsville. I don't know. Who I would be able to tell the outlaws that there was gold on that eastbound train. I don't know who'd tell that. I don't know how there could be any such leak. It was confidential. Think, Hawkins. Think hard. It may save Betty's life. <laughs> Questioned Calkins, the telegraph operator. Snake and Mir joined their outlaw friends at their camp in the forest. They tied Murphy securely to a tree. Then Snake removed something from his saddlebag and showed it to the engineer. Now then, Mike, take a look at this and tell me if you recognize it. Fancy ribbon. There ain't but one hunk like that in the state. So you know it, huh? I fetched that from St. Louis. Uh huh. And give it to Betty Calkins, didn't you? Yes. Then how do you reckon we got it if we didn't capture the girl? You dirty rat, you! I oh, made the devil take you for what you done. <laughs> Ain't no use straining again them ropes, Murphy. You won't bust them. Now, maybe you want a little more proof before you're convinced. Hey, you! Fetch that horse here. I'm in, Snake. I don't know if you know the girl's horse or not, but this is it. Where is she? Murphy, there ain't but one way for you to ever see the girl alive. That's to do what we told you. Kill me fireman and a couple of the lads that's on me train. And kill the crew of the eastbound. Let the crooks like you get away with whatever's aboard the train. Double-cross me. Come or see your sweetheart dead. I don't know if it'll take me long to decide. You can jump from the train. We'll all ride along with you. And as far as I'm concerned, you can stop your train. Just so long as it's left on the tracks right near the turn. Now, you ain't got but a few hours to make up your mind, so you better do some thinking. And even if you don't do what we want, we'll likely get what we're after. We'll find out how to run that engine for our own selves. Maybe we could torture him a little. Keep back. I'm handling this. All right. We got the covered. What's going on over there? Rabbit, you know what's, going on? what's the boys outside the camp got? Found someone there. Uh, go on there, engine. Lake, I want to talk with you. Where'd you get the red skin? Where'd he come from? He was over there in the dark. Listening to all we said. Oh, so you figured to spy on us, huh? You not go through a scheme. Where you from? Me not talk. Time to that tree. See if there's any other stupors around here. Right. I'll handle these fellas. I got good ways of handling red skin. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
And now to continue our story. The Snake Lofgren gang made Mike Murphy, the engineer of the westbound train, a prisoner. Then offered him a choice between the death of the girl he loved and the wrecking of the eastbound train. Tonto, who had followed the outlaws to their camp, was discovered and captured. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger had gone to the home of the girl's father, Dan Calkins, the telegraph operator, where he waited for Tonto's return. He should have been here long before this, unless... Where is he? If he's coming here, why don't he come? We don't know how far he had to go to reach Snake's camp. But time is passing. Another couple of hours and it'll be too late. Wait. Tonto's horse. Where's the man who went to the outlaws camp? I don't know. Steady there, white fellow. Here, Silver. But I'm going to find out. All right, white fellow. Goes the way. But wait. What about my daughter? What about Betty? First we must find Tonto. Sit up, white fellow. Follow him, Silver. Come on, boy. Hail, hail, Tonto's horse led the way to the forest while the Lone Ranger followed cautiously. He knew that the appearance of Whitefellow without his master meant that Tonto had been injured or captured. In the outlaw's camp, Tonto was solidly facing Snake Lofgren. Now, Mears, hand me that bullwhip. Here you are, Snake. Injun, you gonna tell me what you was here for and who you're reporting to? Or have the living daylight speed out of you? Me not talk. No? We'll see about that. We better go over and shut the engineer's mouth, huh, Snake? Yeah, maybe we had. After we open the engines. Mike can't hear us way over here. Go on, boss. Use the whip on the engine. What are you grinning about? Uh, uh, uh. You not hit me. No? Hey, what's he so doggone amused about? He's looking over there at Mike Murphy. Hey, look there. Who's that? Come on, Silver. Man. That's not Silver. Hey, look over there, Silver. Shoot, shoot. Look out. Silver, closely followed by Whitefellow, charged into the outlaws like a furious demon. The Lone Ranger, using his guns as clubs, fought his way to Tonto's side. Then, whipping out a knife, he slashed the rope that bound his friend. Get on your horse, Tonto. Oh, me, me ready. What about my color? Leave him here. Go down and get loose. This way, Tonto. We're clear of them now. Uh, we see you talk to Mike Murphy. Another try to camp. Yes, Tonto. I told them what to do. Be afraid, outlaw, kill girl. That's what I want to check on. Tonto, did you learn anything while you were with them? Them fellas got girl cord. Yes. Got fancy ribbons. And Mike convinced they have to go to the captive. Mm, that's right. Because now we can slow down. Uh, Tonto, I have an idea that I want to test. What's that? I spent a long time with Jim Calkins. There's no way those outlaws could know about the gold. But them No. Yes. And the railroad men are the only ones who could have told them. Uh, the outlaws even know just where the eastbound train will be at a given time. Uh, what we do? We're hunt for girls. She wasn't in the camp, was she? No. We're not there. I told Mike Murphy just what to do. I think he trusted me. What? What him do? He's going to accept the outlaw's terms and agree to take the westbound train out in the morning at six o'clock. Him make wreck? No, Tuttle. I don't think there'll be any wreck. If I can prove just one point, we'll be able to send the lawman to capture the Lofkin gang. What's that point? You'll learn all about it very soon. Come on, Silver! <laughs> The outlaws scattered and searched desperately for the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Meanwhile, the eastbound train thundered on. As the discouraged outlaws returned to their camp, Snake Lofgren spoke to them angrily. What sort of gunman are you, anyhow? We don't know we could, Snake. You didn't get either of them two. Ain't our fault. We sure scoured the woods. I don't know how in heck them two could get away so fast. We kept after them for a time. We didn't have a chance of catching up to them. It don't matter much, though, does it, Snake? What do you mean? Well, they didn't get to learn nothing important. The engine knows we're going to stop that eastbound train, don't he? What can he do about it? That remains to be seen. Miss, I'm done with fooling around. Fetch me the lash. 
I'll try it on the engineer. Ain't he made his mind up yet? No. Here's the whip snake. Good. There. How do you like the sound of that, Murphy? Flashing me won't help. It's getting close to time for you to take that train out. Are you going to do it or not? Where is me girl? You won't find her till you do what I want. Are you going to do it or ain't you? The girl's life depended on me. Seems like you have no choice left. When you take a train out, what else is there for me to do? Good. I thought you'd come around to my way of thinking. But you'd better be taking the ropes off me hands or I won't be able to handle no throttle. How long will it take to get the steam up, get the train ready to move? What time is it now? Around five. You could better be starting right away. I'll have to get me fireman. Oh, no, you don't. Me and Mears will go along to feed the boilers. Sure, but I don't need only one of you. Mears will be the one. I'll keep a gun on you so you don't try no tricks. You don't take no chances, do you, snake face? Cut his ropes. Three of you keep guns leveled on him. I ain't gonna have nothing go wrong at the last minute. I'm watching him. When will they get to see me, girl? After the wreck, when you come back here. I'd be willing to give odds that you double-cross me when I do what you want. Only there ain't no choice for me. They can tell that the likes of you won't leave Betty alive if I don't do what you say. Come on. We'll head for the side where the train is. Bring your horses and everything you own. We'll be needing the camp. Sometime later, the heavy westbound train was ready to move. Switches had been thrown to clear the track, and Mears shoveled coal into the firebox. The engineer held a steady hand on the throttle, while Snake stood close beside him. All right, get going now. Sure, and that's what I'm doing. Go on, Mears, keep feeding that fire. Faster. I want to be as far west as possible when we meet the other one. Get to that bend if you can. That crook ain't so good at shoveling. We don't keep in a fire there. We can't go very fast. Don't bluff me. I ain't. We'll do the best we can. Double harder, Mears. Open up that throttle, Murphy. Remember, the girl ain't saved yet. The train went roaring westward toward the approaching eastbound train. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger raced over to Sam Calkins' home, leaped to the ground, and burst through the door. Calkins! Calkins! Where is she? Where's Betty? Have you found her? No, but Mike is taking the train west. What? Come with me. There's just one chance in the world to prevent that crash. We can't stop the it. The telegraph. But... Come on, it's not part of the station. You can wire the western point and have these bound trains stop. But there wouldn't be a chance to stop it. it will be too late. Come, you'll ride my horse with me. Hey, stop dragging. Get up over there. All right. All right. But I tell you... Come on, Silver. There isn't a chance to stop that train now. Don't you even want to try yeah, sure. But Betty, my daughter. Come on, Silver. Not so fast. Here we are. I'll get into that office and contact the western operator. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. I tell you, there ain't no use. Inside. There's your key. Use it. But I... Hawkins. All right, stranger. I'll, I'll try and reach him. Ask if the eastbound train has passed that point yet. That's what I'm doing. I'll go outside and tighten the fence on my saddle. Call me when you get your answer. All right. All right, stranger. Now, Silver, we'll see if we were right in what we figured. I hope he doesn't keep us here too long. And we'll have a hard ride as it is. Hey, mister. Did you get an answer? Yeah. The train's already past that station. There ain't no way to stop You crook. Well, what's the matter? What do you mean? You mean to say you had a message from the West? Yeah, sure. How? Look at your wires. They've been cut. What? No message could go to the west or come from there. Dawkins, you don't want that train saved. It's a frame-up. It's a rotten scheme that you're working with the Lofkin gang. You took advantage of your friend Mike Murphy's love for your daughter. You're the one who told Lofkin about that gold. You're the one who planned the whole thing. No. No, wait. Listen. And you know where your daughter is. Tell me. Let go of me. Talk. Where's Betty? Stop shaking me. Where is she? At, at Brandsville. I gave their mothers her horse. She rid another horse. Let me go. Yeah. I suspected you when we talked last night. And Mike Murphy helped prove you were crook. If you're here when the law comes, you'll get what Lofkin and his gang will get. hi
Riding like the wind, the masked man reached the top of a hill where Brushwood was piled and waiting. He set the fuel on fire and clouds of smoke billowed to the sky. Far to the west, Tonto, waiting for the signal, saw the pillar of smoke. That signal, white fella. Now we ride. Get him up, white fella. Get him up. Tonto had already brought a group of lawmen to the scene. A few quick words and the hard-riding men led by Tonto sent their mounts thundering along the rails. Meanwhile, in the cab of the engine, Snake was urging Mike to put on more speed. I tell you, Snake Face, this is the best we can do. I pray it don't keep enough steam up. Shovel harder, Mears. Shovel harder. You shovel for I'm all in. I got to keep this pretty covered. I got to make more speed than this. What's that coming after? The fancy phrase. That engine. Oh, cool. Oh, man, now, you spouting. Get on faster. Knock on your chin, right? We're stopping here. Go on, or I shoot. Oh, you shouldn't go there, sir. Wait, wait. I surrender. You, you are. All right. You'll bet I'm all right, engine. What about the girl? Her face. Mask, friend, send message. Girl's father in scheme. Yes? The engine explained everything to me, my face. The girl is safe. So you can put the engine in reverse. And get back to the side, sir. That I will. Find the board. Put your horses in the second car. And then we'll show these spalpeens that this engine can go a lot faster in reverse than she's done heading west. Come on, there, still roll, fellows. Don't show those great legs of yours. Donald's waiting. We'll have to ride again. I know. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.